Hi everybody! Thanks for joining me today for part two of the Steampunk Wings series. I'm Tracy Ackerman, the designer and creator at Keely Boo. I make patterns, costumes, and accessories for 14 to 20 inch dolls. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so and hit the notification bell so you always know when I post new content. Keely Boo newsletter subscribers get access to all the patterns that I cover in these video tutorials for free. So if you're not already signed up for my newsletter list, I'll put a link in the description below where you can do so. Today we're going to be working on getting all of the other pieces for our wings ready to go so that in video number three we can assemble the whole thing. Let's get creating. Today we're going to be getting our body and strap pieces ready so that in video number three we can put everything all together. So I'm just going to go over the things that you're going to need for this video. First thing is the pattern. If you haven't already downloaded it, you can go to the Keely Boo newsletter subscribers download page. There is a link on the top menu of my website. This is available to newsletter subscribers only, so if you haven't subscribed to my newsletter, I'll put a link in the description below where you can get signed up and then you will get access to this page. If you've already downloaded this pattern and printed it, just note that I have made one small change to this body detail piece. I forgot to put these um, placement marks on this piece before. That's the only change that the shape of the piece hasn't changed so if you don't want to reprint um, don't bother but if you do it's been updated. The next thing you're going to need is a single sheet of six millimeter foam. It can be in any color because we're going to be painting it. You don't need very much probably less than half of a sheet. This is a 9 by 12 sheet that I got from Michaels. You're also going to need some 2 millimeter foam and we're going to be cutting the front uh, body detail piece out of this. Again, it doesn't matter what color it is because we're going to be painting. You're going to need a single acrylic dome. This is going to be used to make our fake gauge for the front. These are one inch wide. And you're going to need a piece of leather, and depending on which version of the wings you're doing, uh, a girl for all time or 18 inch, you're going to need one that's either 14 inches wide or 10 inches wide. The only piece of hardware we're going to be using today is our half inch pin buckle. For decorating our pieces, we're going to be painting all the foam pieces black. You can either use black acrylic craft paint or a spray paint like I'm using. Um, this one is a satin finish so it won't be super glossy. And you're going to need some wax metallic paste. I'm going to be using rub and buff in gold leaf and Spanish copper which is actually more of a brown color. In terms of tools, these are some of the tools that I am going to be using. My leather punch set. I will not actually be using this because I'm laser cutting my foam pieces, but this will be the easiest way for you to cut holes out of the body pieces and also to cut the round spacers that we need for inside of the wing apparatus. If you are not laser cutting your pieces or cutting them with an electronic die cutter, you're going to need a utility knife to cut the thicker foam and I recommend having a sharpener handy so you can sharpen your blade. It's much easier to cut foam cleanly when you've got a nice sharp blade. I will be using two different types of marking tools today. I'm going to be using my white chalk pen for marking some things and I'm going to be using a fine point sharpie to mark others. You'll probably also find a sharp pair of scissors with a long blade helpful. You can use these to cut out the pattern pieces as well as the two millimeter foam. For the leather straps, I am going to be using uh, my ruler and my ergonomic rotary cutter to cut my leather. I prefer 
to cut the strips that way, but you can certainly trace around your pattern pieces if you would prefer to do that. I'm also going to be using my crop dial to punch the holes that I need to punch in my leather straps for rivets and for the buckle, but you can also use the leather punches since you already have those on hand. I have cut my body pieces out of the foam using my laser cutter, but if you don't have a laser cutter or a die cutter that you're using to cut these out, what you need to do is take your pattern piece, punch out your holes, trace around it using a ballpoint or a marker or something that you can see and carefully cut it out using a utility knife. Then you want to punch out these holes and using your chalk pen, mark the placement. Once you've traced and cut out your pieces and you've marked the space for your holes, you're going to want to use your 1 8 inch punch on these small ones because we're going to be using the 1 8 inch dowels in those holes and your 3 16 inch punch on the bottom hole. So grab your hammer, punch away, just uh, make sure to give it a twist after you've hammered it home to make sure that it's cut all the way around. While we've got our punches out, we're going to cut our spacers out of the six millimeter foam as well. So for the bigger ones, you only need two and you're gonna wanna cut a five eighths inch circle and once you get those punched out in the center, you're going to want to punch out a quarter inch circle. For the smaller ones, you need six, and you're going to punch a half inch circle, and then from the center, punch a five thirty second inch circle. I just wanted to mention that because these spacers are going to be in the interior of our apparatus, it doesn't matter if they look a little rough. As you can see, the laser cutter kind of melted away a couple of edges on one of the bigger spacers I cut here. On to our two millimeter foam where we're gonna cut our body detail piece. I'm actually going to cut this one out because I have misplaced the one I cut on my laser cutter. So since I have such a long um, straight edge here, I'm just going to put that against the factory cut edge of the foam. And I'm actually going to line up the little side with the other factory cut edge. And then just trace around using my Sharpie. It might be kind of hard to see these lines on camera. Oh, it shows up all right. Um, now I'm going to cut this out with my scissors. The most important thing about cutting foam, whether you're using a utility blade or your scissors, is to make sure you keep the blade perpendicular to the cut you're making unless you're trying to make an angle cut. Now that all my foam pieces are cut, I am going to spray paint them all. As I said before, you can use black acrylic craft paint if you don't have spray paint or you don't want to spray paint. It's important that you cover all sides of the body pieces. So you wanna make sure you cover the front, the back side, the, all the sides. For this one, you just want to make sure that you get the front as well as the sides covered. Let those dry. Um, I find with spray paint it's best to give it a couple of hours to dry otherwise it stays kind of tacky and you won't be able to put your rub and buff on. And once they are dry we're going to apply our rub and buff. My pieces are painted and I've actually let them dry overnight so they're not tacky at all anymore. Because this body detail piece is going to be sitting on top of the body piece eventually, I'm just going to trace around it so I don't cover this whole front with rub and buff. You don't have to do this. It will still stick if you add the rub and buff across the whole front surface. I'm just trying to conserve some of my rub and buff here. So I we'll just do a quick trace around so now I know I'm just going to take the rub and buff a little bit inside this chalk line on this front piece but otherwise I'm going to cover these pieces on the fronts the backs and 
the edges with gold leaf rub and buff and then I'm going to cover the body detail piece with Spanish coffee rub and buff. You can choose different colors if you want. This is just what I have decided to go with. I've got one of my body pieces here and I just want to remind you always squeeze your tube of rub and buff before you open it up and start using it because the oil can separate from the wax metallic paste in there and then you'll just get a bunch of oil coming out. I'm using a glove because I'm going to be covering a large surface area so a q-tip's not going to cut it and I don't want to get this all over my finger if I can avoid it. So just apply some, rub it all over. I'm going to let this set before I do the buffing portion and in the meantime I'm just going to go ahead and rub some of the stuff I have left on my glove onto the sides here. If you can see I'm probably going to need to add a little bit more but with these steampunk pieces I don't mind having a little bit of the black showing through because it makes it look look a little bit more like aged metal. So go ahead and add the rub and buff to the front and the back side as well as the side edges for both of these pieces. I finished applying my gold leaf rub and buff to both of my body pieces on the edges as well as the fronts and backs. On this one I left a bit of blank space because it's going to be covered up by the body detail piece. I'm going to set these aside and let them set up for a few minutes before I buff and I'm going to be applying my Spanish copper to my detail piece. I've finished applying my Spanish copper and as I've said before it's almost more of a brown color. I've gotten some on the edges as well as the front but left the back un rub and buffed. I've let these set up for a few minutes and then I went ahead and buffed them and I'm going to set them aside now until we work on assembly. One small thing that we've got to get done is prepare our gauge for assembly and I have a one inch punch so I'm just going to use it to punch this out. This is actually a little bit smaller than one inch so I may have to trim around the edges but you can certainly cut this out with a pair of scissors. I've gone ahead and trimmed this up and I'm going to be applying one of these domes. Now the great thing about these is they have adhesive already on them so it's pretty easy. I just got to line it up with my gauge face that I cut out and there we go. Next we're going to be cutting out and prepping our straps. Because the bottom strap is too big to fit on one sheet of paper, you need to cut the pieces out and then line them up matching the triangle A's with one another and just tape it in place. I'm going to be working with the A Girl for All Time size straps in the video but there's also the size to fit 18 inch dolls so just make sure you're using the right ones. Now you could if you prefer trace your pattern pieces onto the back side of your leather or vinyl and cut them out. I prefer to actually cut a strip with my ruler and rotary cutter these straps are a half inch wide, so I'm just going to cut some half inch wide strips and then I will lay the pieces on top to trace the rounded side for the bottom strap and get the right lengths. So you need to cut two shoulder straps and one bottom strap. All right, I've got my shoulder straps cut and I did notice that I had an error in uh, placement of some of the holes for the agate size straps. So if you, you should re-download the pattern if you haven't already downloaded it and you want to use that size. And especially if you're using an electronic die cutter or laser cutter to cut the pieces, I've updated the SVG files as well so that the hole markings are in the right place. Now I've got this long strip that I'm going to use to cut out my bottom strap and so I'm just going to lay it on my leather strip and trace around 
the top of the pattern piece so I get a nice rounded tip and cut that out. And then once I've gotten this cut, I'm going to go ahead and punch all the holes in my pattern pieces using my Cropodile 1 8 inch punch. And then I'm gonna transfer the markings from the pattern pieces onto the leather strips. Since my leather is fairly dark, I'm gonna be using my chalk pencil to make the oops, markings because I've got white chalk in it, so that's going to show up better for me than dark pen. I've punched all my holes, and now I'm going to set my shoulder straps aside till we do assembly. But the last thing that we're going to do is install our pin buckles. So on the bottom strap, the not rounded side, this first hole is the hole that your pin is going to go through on your buckle. Make sure that you've got this going the right way. Um, the pin usually has a bit of a curl so you know that you've got it in correctly. And now what I'm going to do is use a little bit of double-sided tape to hold the overlap in place. I'm just gonna apply it right on the back here. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I just find that using that little bit of double-sided tape helps hold it in place. Okay, as you can see, um, it's overlapping this hole that we have for a rivet, but that's okay. I'm just gonna, after I get this sewn, um, I'm gonna go back and punch that hole. So take it to your sewing machine and stitch the overlap in place. I'm actually gonna stitch it along the edge and on the other side of this rivet hole and then I'm going to go back with my crocodile and punch this out. There we go. I've got the buckle stitched in place and I have punched that hole through the other layer. So I'm going to set this aside and in our next video we'll be putting all of our pieces together and finishing off our steampunk wings. Thanks for joining me for part two of the steampunk wing series. Can you guys do me a favor? Please subscribe, hit the thumbs up button for this video, share with your friends, and leave me a comment. All those things help my videos rank in the searches. Next time, we'll be putting our steampunk wings all together, so stay tuned so you don't miss that. Thanks for watching, everybody.